That is a good question. Um, make a massive stadium. No, I don't. I don't. I don't really know. I don't know. Um, I try. Personally, I, I would say because if we had if we had funding um, off like a, a big chunk, it all it all depends on it how much funding you get because same. There's a lot of lads who travel like miles and miles, and that, like, that's a lot of money out of their pocket as well. Because um, it's as much as like the, the staff and all are volunteering, we're also even though we're playing the game, we're also volunteering. We're paying our own money uh, as well uh, for whether it's we go out for a meal afterwards or we we petrol costs and everything like that. They even train some lads at getting the train on and they're not cheap nowadays, especially with all the strikes and everything. So it's maybe we just travel, travel thing it or anything like that. But how we've got it at the minute is it is good. Uh, but I'm more so two years ago I said I would have said it's good and it's gone better since. So there'll definitely be something to improve. The Olympics and the Paralympics were a great spectacle in this country. But you know, as you say. Few years after that now there's not really that support there really um, you know and that legacy is not really come to fruition kind of thing really and disabled sport has not really moved on um, you know the, the, there should be more shown on television you know um, that the athletes should be valued for it it's it just seems a lot of organizations are just doing the bare minimum and just um, you not you know not paying full attention to it really I think from a, an amputee football perspective we're on a similar trajectory to the to the women's mainstream football um, obviously a few years behind that uh, and it'd be nice to follow that path and receive the funding and receive the coverage that that, that they get um, and I do feel as though there has been strides made with disability sport in general but there's still a hell of a lot of way to go to uh, for it to be acceptable if you had all the funding in the world, what would you do? Yeah, so we, we have kind of three sections to that. Uh, the first one is our junior programme, uh, which is a, a brilliant programme where uh, young uh, amputees can come uh, and enjoy football and have that opportunity to play with, with people in a similar situation to them. Uh, always looking for funding for that. If we had an unlimited part, that would be fantastic. Continue to grow that. The second part is the, the, the league structure. We have four teams currently. Uh, we'd like more. Um, to kind of almost um, for players to come through that system and uh, go into the national team uh, that needs promoting that needs funding as well uh, and then finally our national team we go to European competitions to world competitions um, and that costs uh, we're relying solely at this moment in time on funding and sponsorship and fundraising uh, so to have an unlimited pot of money will give us so many opportunities to go and play against other nations I was born with something called fibula hemimelia so basically born without a fibula bone. So they just they gave my parents an option to either have like the cage thing where you have metal go through your leg or just cut it off. So you just had a cut off at nine months old. If we got the same coverage as like the mainstream Olympics, like we get the people should get the recognition they deserve. It's not like the Paralympians aren't working as hard as the Olympians, like they're probably working just as hard, if not more, because of the disability. You've got to train yourself in a different way.